It's the championship game in the Marsh Hall of Fame Classic. The Lawrence North Wildcats meet the Bedford North Lawrence Stars. Hello, everyone. Chuck Marlowe with John Laskowski. Well, John, this is what the fans, if they really wanted to see something out of the four teams here, and all four quite capable, this is the game. The North Lawrence Stars against Lawrence North. I think so. They don't have a regular season game, but they do have the two leading candidates for Mr. Basketball. Don't be surprised there's a tie this year. We're talking about Eric Montrose for Lawrence North, defending state champions. The big seven-footer, he had a great afternoon today. Uh, scored six, 16 points, had 17 rebounds, led his team to a victory today. Here's some of the action. He had 15 defensive rebounds, and when this fellow wants to get a rebound, he can grab one. He went up strong there, moved to his right with one dribble, and got the shot. He's going to be the big guy inside that Bedford North Lawrence is going to have to stop. Now on the other side, talking about Bedford North Lawrence, of course, we're talking about a young man who's already, already predicted to his college, and that would be Damon Bailey. Here he is, number 32 with the ball, and he can just look at any position on the floor and do what he has to do. You see, he had 31 points today, a little below his average, 34 and a half, I guess a bad day. Not really, though, because he led his team to a victory. The game was close all the way at the very end. He took a couple dribbles uh, in the last couple possessions, never stopped that dribble, took it all the way to the basket, made a big three-point play, and got his team a three-point victory. Okay, how are these two teams going to have to match up? What are they going to have to do? Well, the interesting thing is the two star players don't really play the same position. Montrose at seven foot will probably be guarded by one of the inside players from Bedford and look for Damon to roam around. He's going to play some on the baseline. He did today in the first half, and then he played outside in the second half. Lawrence North's going to have a tough job controlling him. So again, as we talked this morning, it's going to be a five on five effort, just as always in a high school game. Bailey likes to challenge the inside. Eric's going to be there. I think you'll see him uh, meet every once in a while, but maybe Maybe not intentionally. Okay. The stage is set. It should be a good game. It's Lawrence North, the Wildcats versus the stars of Bedford North Lawrence. And we'll be back with the starting lineups in just a minute. Uh, Lawrence North is not back on the court yet. And uh, so I happened to pass Dan Bush. I just leaned over to him and I says, good luck. And he had sort of a anticipatory smile on his face he didn't know whether to grin real big he did say thank you but uh, I think each coach is going to recognize here tonight Jack Kiefer for Lawrence North as well as Dan Bush for Bedford North Lawrence this is going to be a really good test in the early going of the season for each of these teams last coaches who are going to be a little uh, nervous they've already proved they won the first game and now they've got a chance to be the Hall of Fame classic champions if they can just pull off one more. So look for the coaches to be a little nervous here in the second game. Still about a minute away. We've uh, come up with a little bit of extra time, and I think some of that is due to the fact that the first game ended uh, about three minutes later than what uh, had been anticipated. They're allowed 25 minutes. The consolation game this evening was between Newcastle and Pike. Pike won that game. 74 to 59 finishes third in the tourney. And uh, earlier today, of course, to get to this championship game, Newcastle uh, and Lawrence North played. Lawrence North defeated Newcastle 72 to 58. That was the second game. In the first game, Lemington or uh, Bedford North Lawrence 65 and Pike 60. So uh, stage is set really for uh, some pretty good activity. We've, we've had good play all around. Good full team contributions. And we will uh, take a look at uh, this afternoon's scoring player by player as it comes into full. Okay, there's the buzzer and uh, the officials for tonight's game, Roger Holden and Phil Napario are donating their time. These uh, officials are being presented plaques. There they are, Phil Napario and Roger Holder. And they're being given plaques from the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame for their contributions to uh, the success of this tourney. A record attendance this afternoon, 10,229. Now let's go down to Tom Carnegie for the introduction of tonight's players. Championship game. First of all, for the Wildcats of Lawrence North. At the forward positions, number 33. Six foot three senior, Dwayne Lewis. 
At the other forward, six foot three senior number 44, Eddie Casano. And at the center position, seven foot senior number 53, Eric Montrose. Now to the guards. Number 13, six foot senior, Damon Watts. And at the other guard position, rounding out the starting quintet, number 30, Keith Berryhill, six foot two senior. And the coach of the defending IHSAA state champions, Jack Keeper. Now for the Bedford North Lawrence Stars. At one forward, number 22, six foot junior, Chad Mill. At the other forward, six foot three senior, Number 32, Damon Bailey. <laughs> Starting at center for the star. Six foot two, junior. Number 40, Jason Lombre. Now for the guards. Number 10, five foot nine inch senior, Dwayne Curry. And at the other guard spot, number 12, six foot one senior, Jamie Cummings. And the coach, Dan Bush. And let's play basketball. Here's a look at Dan winning his seventh game this afternoon as Bedford North Lawrence defeated Pike 65-60. It was a game that saw a lot of swings and <laughs> We'll be back with the tip-off of tonight's championship game in just a moment. Teams are at center court. Lawrence North dressed in green. And the home team white belongs to Bedford North Lawrence. Here are the results earlier today. Lawrence North defeated Newcastle 72-58. That was the second game played. The first game, Bedford North Lawrence beat Pike 65-60. Damon Bailey and Eric Montrose to jump center. And the tip is controlled by Bedford. So the Stars get first attack at the basket, moving from your left to right. They will appear on the scoreboard. Bedford will on the left side, the home side. For 22 is Chad Mills. Outside is Bailey. That's not going to make it. And pulled down by the seven-foot senior center for Lawrence North. On the line, turnover, first to the game. And back it comes with Bedford to attack again. That was Bailey with the pressure that time. As you saw the long pass, tried to make the steal into the Bedford bench, out of bounds, back to the Stars. Barry Hill, Lewis, Montross, Watts, and Cassiano. The five starters for the Wildcats, Damon Bailey, along with Lambrecht, Mills, Curry, and Cummings for the Stars. Bailey feeds the side. That's Cummings. He had a hot hand, whistle underneath. He had contact. First foul of the game. Cassiano is guilty of an infraction against Damon Bailey. Right, he's going to have the job of guarding Bailey, at least from the start. It's a man-to-man -man defense by Lawrence North. And again, we talked about Damon Bailey being so active. You look at Jack Kiefer trying to devise a plan to stop the Bedford Star. And it comes and around it goes. Lombrek to Curry and back into the corner. Bailey sends three off the glass. Makes the steal, comes back inside, goes up for two more, and it won't go, and Eric... Pulls down the board. That's two big boards for Montrose. And three missed shots by Damon Bailey. 
inside then back out in it goes to the post knocked away and off the legs out of bounds it was off the legs of Montross and then past the baseline before it touched Jamie Cummings again so a little Harrison type defense employed here by Bedford and they come up with another possession and a chance to go after the first two points of the game. Good awareness by Bedford to get back on Montrose when he received the ball inside caused that turnover. Right through the traffic goes Curry. Swing gives it up to Bailey. This is Mills. Curry again. Three, but it's off the front of the rim. Cassiano for this Lawrence North. And he loses it out of bounds. It'll belong to the Cats. Doesn't seem like either one of these teams are tired at all from this afternoon's game. And I think you can uh, say a lot of that has to do with adrenaline. When you get to that championship game, you're so excited about being here, but you don't really think about how tired you are, especially Lawrence North. They didn't have as much rest as Bedford uh, coming into tonight's game. Rebounded shot by Montross. Cassiano's effort was no good. To Bailey. Both teams cold. Getting things underway. Up to the glass and then Damon Bailey takes it right past two cap defenders. Saw him do that this afternoon. He likes to take that drive after getting the rebound at the other end. And if you don't step out to stop him, he'll continue all the way to the basket for left. 30 is Perry Hill. Works it out. Cassiano at the guard. Now this is Watts. He'll fire. He hits. Little 2-3 zone by Bedford North Lawrence, really stacking in that middle. They are a much smaller team than Lawrence North, so they also need to be in there for rebounding. To the side goes Cummings. Gives it to Mills. And kicked away. It'll be Bedford ball. North Lawrence to toss it in. The Stars to Cummings. Curry, now Bailey. Lombrecht goes away. Oop. Bailey was cutting down. Curry threw it away. Second is up and in on good effort. Early turnovers have hurt both teams. They, neither team really getting on track offensively, scoring more on the transition game than on the set offense. Inside and a foul. Barry Hill coming over the shoulder as Lombrecht was going up for an easy two. Curry's down under the basket. Looked like he's got a knee or an ankle. He's uh, still on his back. Let's take a look and see what happens. Number 20, Alan Bush is going to come in. Here's the play. The foul was from behind against Lambrick. You couldn't really see what happened to uh, Curry on that. It looks like his right knee. That's the area is favoring right now, and certainly hope it is not a knee. The young man is in a great deal of pain. In the lineup, Alan Bush, number 20, sophomore son of Dan Bush, the coach. 5'10", 145 pounds. And with 4.46 remaining in the first quarter, we have a timeout. The score, Lawrence North 4, Bedford North Lawrence 2. Very slow starting game. Here's Damon Bailey. Watch Bailey on the move and drive. He likes to go to his right. He just faked a little left, went right in. Even as big as Montrose was, not able to block that one. Damon very good on that move, but... Both teams uh, do seem a little nervous. I didn't think they would be, but only four to two right now. Look at the field goals. Only two of four for Lawrence North. One out of five for Bedford. Yeah, it's 20% shooting for the Stars. Lombrecht, Jason Lombrecht, 6'2", junior. At 14 this afternoon, Archer's this one high in the air for his first point. And one more with a chance to tie it. Saw Bedford press a lot, too, in this afternoon's game. They have not employed their press yet. Won't go. Montrose with another board. He had 17, 17 rebounds in this afternoon's first game. Or in their game, first game this afternoon. Inside, that was intended for Montrose. And uh, Lee just thrown a little bit too far out of the reach of 
even the big seven-footer. Now, one of the keys to Lawrence Norris' offense is getting the ball into Montrose as he's moving. And that time, he was coming from the weak side over, but the pass was led a little too high. Eric not able to get it. And that, uh, that was an interesting observation you made this afternoon. As long as he is static, he's easy to guard. He's a lot you can easy trip to guard. Him. You can trap him, uh, trip a team as, a, as uh, Bedford gets a basket. That's Chad Mills, and Mills puts the Stars in front by one, 5-4. And it's the same at, at any level, Chuck. It, when a guy's moving with the ball, he's very difficult to guard. If he's standing still, he's a little bit easier. In they go. Montross again. This is Cassiano. He'll let just two go. Oh, they call it three. Good target. Good shot. Eddie Cassiano. He's the guy Eric likes to dish off to when he's double or triple teamed inside. You'll see Cassiano on the same side as Montross most of the game. 7-5. Lawrence North has taken the lead. Wheels away from Cassiano. It won't go. All around the rim. And up they come quickly. Here's Eddie again. Cassiano in the Montrose. Well, he was quadrupled that time. They had four right around him. No place to go. And stolen by Mills. Chad brings it up. Gives it to Bailey. And inside... Jason Lombard for his first field goal. And we're tied at seven. Good lead pass that time by Bailey. You see the turnovers have hurt Lawrence North here, four to one. And once again, there it is, Laz. Montross and Cassiano on the same side of the floor. See how Lawrence North will sag in there. Dame is on now. There's three guys will be on Montross. He has to dish back outside. They won't go. Look at Montross go for that ball. Decided height advantage, and all he has to do is just keep it alive. Tip back out. We're going to have a foul against Lawrence North. Wildcats number 33. Dwayne Lewis, a little bit too aggressive in trying to deflect that ball back out, and he's picked up his first. Watch the block out here by Bedford. They've got all five guys. They look that double team, and Montrose on the block out. They're very much over, overmatched today in height, but th when they control it inside position, They've got a good chance to get the rebound or the foul. That time it was the foul. Third foul against the Cats, and Bedford North Lawrence has still to commit the foul. Knocked away. But they're going to give the ball back to Bedford. Barry Hill said it should be ours. The officials said otherwise. There's Dan Bush. And uh, we have a timeout. Uh, another official timeout with 2.29. Remaining the score is tied at seven. Well, we've, we've seen a game start out very, very slowly, Laz. Uh, much the same as this afternoon. Then all of a sudden, both teams started lighting up. They got a little bit looser and more aggressive toward the basket. Uh, can you anticipate the same thing? Or do these teams have so much respect for each other, they're going to be tentative in their, in their offenses? No, I think you're going to see this game change. Both of these teams in their games today each scored 34 points in the first half. And here we're well into the first quarter. They each only have seven. I expect a lot more scoring. Let's watch Montrose now on the rebound action. The shot goes up. He turns to the basket. He's got block out, but that, that arm and height advantage is so great, he's able to tap it twice and then come up with it. He's about 10 feet away from the basket, but look how the crowd he draws. Three Bedford uh, North Lawrence players around him. Well, the rebounds uh, today out rebounding uh, the Trojans 38-27. In that afternoon contest, Montrose had 16 points to go with his 17 boards. He has yet to score in tonight's game. As a matter of fact, only two have scored, Damon Watson, Eddie Cassiano. Cassiano's three. Uh, take that back. Uh, we have another uh, uh, Berry Hill, I believe, has as the other field goal. Berry Hill, Cassiano, and Watts. Handling the ball is Jamie Cummings. It goes over to 20. That's Alan Bush. A step up by Cummings. Bush will fire three. It's off the front of the rim. Knocked in the air. He fights with the seven foot over the ball, and that's a mismatch and no contest. Bush at 5'10. Montross at seven. Bush, a very accurate three point shooter, but he has not been able to hit that shot today. Inside move. And that's Eric's first basket. Great, great move. Yeah, uh, great job the there. He didn't put the ball down low. He got it on the move, turned right into the basket without a dribble. He's got a nice jump shot in that 5 to 10 foot range. Bush now tries to 
Work it away and finally gives it to Bailey. And Bailey wants Bush out of the corner. Man-to-man -man defense now by Lawrence North. And it'll go to uh, to the Bedford Stars. Loose ball up into some of the VIP seats uh, down here in front of the timing scoring table. A lot of members from the Hall of Fame here. Members as well as directors. This being their big game uh, day, the Hall of Fame Classic. And uh, too much time, five seconds used up. Jimmy Cummings just couldn't find anyone to get the ball to and had to give it up. 136 remaining first quarter. Lots of early turnovers. About a minute and a half left now in the first quarter. The Wildcats with the lead. Nine to seven. And in it goes again. Montross. Oh, he muscles his way through. Can't get it to fall. And the loose ball off the rebound is picked up by Cummings. Here comes Bailey. Slows it down now and waits for his offense to get set. What's Damon going to do? You wonder what's going through the mind right there. I no good. And over the back, a rebounding foul on Jason Lombrecht. That's the first team foul against Bedford North Lawrence. Let's take a look again. A little off balance on this shot. Both Cassiano and Montrose there. Damon a little long. There's the foul from Lombrick on top. The one thing we saw amazing about Bedford's afternoon game against Pike, Pike did not shoot any free throws in that game. Very unusual to see that, but Pike was never fouled in the act of shooting, and Bedford never let him into the bonus situation, which would have been one and one. Now, oh boy, here is a little give and go on the pressure. And Cassiano, high in the air, only 6-3. But he is playing tall tonight. That's his second field goal. And right through the hands of Chad Mills. Well, the stars are a little bit tight. We're going to see a substitution. Paul Stevens, 6'2", senior, checks in the lineup replacing Mills. Mills, a junior, will sit down after that turnover. 42 seconds left first quarter. He just joined his championship game of the Marsh Hall of Fame Classic from Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Lawrence North, a winner this afternoon. The Stars, a winner over Pike in the first game, and they're meeting tonight in the championship battle. It's Lawrence North, 11-7 at this stage. 21 seconds left to be played. Very low scoring first half. It looks like North... Trying to go for that last shot. They run Montrose on a high release, and now they're into their offense. There's Watts down in the corner to Barry Hill off the rim. No good. The Stars battle for the ball and come out with it with three seconds, two seconds from midcourt. Oh, just short, but right on target. And we've come to the end of the first period here at Assembly Hall. First quarter action. And it's Lawrence North 11, Bedford North Lawrence 7. 11 7 is the score. Here's some end to end action, Lass. Montrose to that big target up there gets the pass long to Cassiano for the stuff. That's the way to break a press. Montrose does a nice job of looking down the floor. When he receives that ball, he holds it high to protect it. And you see the reaction from the Lawrence North bench. All right, back to live action. Ready to get things underway after that timeout. And still waiting, and officials' uh, time is being given from the bench. Uh, don't know what the delay is right now, but there we go. Now we're underway. Lawrence North just 5 of 12 from the field, but uh, Bedford North Lawrence 3 out of 10, just 30%. Both teams uh, obviously better shooters than that. 7.56, just underway, starting the second quarter of action. Cassiano, Eddie, gives it up to Watts. Around the goal. 33 is Wayne Lewis, and he gets inside the paint. Short shot is pulled down by the Stars, and here they come. Lombrecht right into Montrose. Oh, good step in. And a steal by Lewis. And back the other way. Watts, you give him a lot of room because he is a very, very did a very quick shooter. Give that basket to Eric Montross. He got the bounce of the ball. That's his second. 
Here's some of the Bedford fans ready to get Bedford going. And the switch they make is to let Damon Bailey bring the ball up the floor. From the corner, off the rim, no good. Manzos battling his teammate for the ball. And up comes Barry Hill, right side. 13-7, six-point advantage for the IHSAA champions of last year. There's Bailey. Out of traffic. He's going to take it in the end. And a foul. A couple of players, Bailey and Cassiano, collide underneath. The official has called the foul. However, back out here on Watts, I believe. Let's know it's on 33. I'm sorry, Lewis. Instead of 13. Wayne Lewis with his second person. Damon does that as well as anybody you'll see at the high school level. He takes the rebound and races right down the floor, one on the whole team. Could have been a charge there, but the foul from behind came first, so we'll never know whether that would have been good enough for a charge. In the act of shooting, so Damon has two shots. Bailey, 6'3. 190 pounds in the senior. That's the second. He has four, two in each period. 13-9 as the Stars try to whittle away at the Wildcat lead. Around to Lewis. Cassiano. There's Watts. Now Montross. He'll put it up. Tipped up. No good. Guess who pulls it away? Here he comes. No foul. Inside. No basket. He took too many steps. Damon does a nice job of driving into the middle. Here's the drive then after the ball comes back out. One, two, three. That's right. He took too many steps. Up court to Lewis to Watts. The Wildcats with the lead looking for two more. Barry Hill. Fans want to travel there. Here's Watts. And he gets that to Nestle. Looks like Bedford North Lord's going to give that shot, the outside shot, to prevent Montrose from getting the ball inside. Again, Damon, the point guard now, trying to generate some offense for Bedford. And it's back to a six-point lead, 15-9. Alan Bush to Cummings, Jamie Cummings. Bailey for three. Oh, yeah! We saw him make two three-pointers this afternoon in that third quarter. It's really propelled Bedford North Lawrence in their game. And they did need one here, too, because they lead down to three. Now, that three-point shot makes a lot of difference, Slaz. The way you shot when you were in high school, you'd probably ended up state scoring champion. Well, he didn't have that shot. That's I, right. We'll never know about that. <laughs> But it sure has helped players like Bailey who get an extra point on that long shot. Barry Hill. He goes baseline to put up that shot, but commits the offensive foul. Barry Hill is second. And uh, we have a timeout at the 4.59 mark, just inside five minutes remaining first half. The score, Lawrence North 15, Bedford North Lawrence starts 12. There's a happy little fan. I wonder if she saw Santa Claus yesterday. <laughs> That's the Bedford cheering section. And their team down by three points right now. 4.59 left in the second quarter. Saw Jimmy Cummings just a minute ago. They took Dwayne Curry to the locker room. We have not had a report on his injury. Curry went down just before the end of the first quarter of action. Now, the Stars with the ball to bring it up. Watts defending. That's Cummings across the line. Tough man-to-man -man defense yep. by Lawrence North. Look how far out they pressure to try to get Bedford out of their offense. With Bailey right over next to that sideline. Now Cummings back to Bailey. Inside, up to the glass. Oh. Oh. Through two defenders there, and as he falls to the floor, Damon able to get that shot away. And Bailey is down at the other end to pull down the rebound. Here he comes. One, on two, two more. Timeout at 
the 4-13 mark. And it's a different game, 16-15. You know, Laz, I'll tell you something. Everyone knows he's coming to IU. I can't imagine any of these players not recognizing what a thrill it's going to be to play with that kind of talent. Let's watch Damon. He's really brought this game back into, into close competition. As we talked about, momentum changes very quickly in a high school game. Watch him go right between two defenders. Really no contact of great nature there, enough to call a foul anyway. And he gets that one to fall in as he falls down. At the other end, he takes the rebound. And then he comes right on his own, a one on the rest of them. He switches to the left hand and then goes to the left side, plants both feet underneath, and gets that lay at the fall. So two quick baskets to give Lawrence North, uh, Bedford North Lawrence the lead here in the second quarter. Statistically, look at this. 17 of 22 free throws. And they did not send Pike to the free throw line. That's amazing. a 17 to nothing advantage yep. uh, in the ball game. And today, it's a little bit the same. Three out of four for Bedford. Lawrence North has not gone to the line yet. Well, the Stars have squeaked back in front. 16-15. And we have 4.13 left to play in this first half. Now, this is that press we saw this afternoon, but really hadn't seen much of it. Now, Bedford North Lawrence goes into a full-court man-to-man press. That's Bush guarding the trigger man in inbounds, and it goes right to Montross, a give-and-go. Down goes the player. That's Cummings. Inside to Montross. He recovers quickly. He's the release man on the press, and then down to post under the basket. 2-3 zone by Bedford. Look how far they drop off. And timeout immediately. Cassiano uh, recognized they were not going to be able to get it where they wanted it last. That was Jack Kiefer, the, the Lawrence North coach, on another timeout. He called one to play before because of Damon Bailey's two big plays that got them the lead. He set something up offensively, and either he didn't see what he liked or Bedford had made a change defensively, and he needed to realign that. Uh, Bedford did go to that zone. So I think he's going to diagram another play here. They're really sagging back on Montrose, and that's caused some problems for Lawrence North to score. I, we sit and, and really talk so much about the talents of Damon Bailey. But it's interesting because in all the years that you and I have been down here broadcasting Indiana basketball, we have watched this young man grow up through the grades, and he has been a topic of conversation ever since he was in the sixth grade. That's right. He was... Uh, Good player very early. He, he quite a reputation, but I think that's helped him. It's given him a chance to play against great competition, a lot of all-star teams, the AAU teams, and he's really matured more than his age. So when he comes to Indiana next year, he'll be ready to go. And that doesn't look like a very happy father, but it is. Yeah. That's uh, Eric Montrose's dad uh, in the crowd today. His team's down one, but his son's had an excellent career already in high school. And, Looking forward to a great career out of his son in college. Well, they've just done a marvelous job in developing this young man emotionally as uh, well as allowing his, his physical skills to develop, too. He's a very well-adjusted young man. Watts. Down to Eric. Boy, do they triple on him down there. He gets the basket to fall. They're going to count it. And the foul is on Cummings. That's the second. Looks like uh, Coach Keeper wanted to go into Montrose. After that timeout, and they surely did, he makes a good move to his right shoulder and gets a foul, as well as the basket. So Mondras has picked up his sixth point and a chance to add one more. 68% shooter from the stripe, and he gets this one to fall for his seventh point. 18-16, just a two-point spread between these two teams. Over and back is the call. Jimmy Cummings off his own heel, attempting to save the ball, but across that 10-second line. Barry Hill back in, and he replaces James Long. Lawrence North with good quickness out at the guard. They can pressure a lot. They do. That time it forced a turnover. Now Watts with the ball, and... Lawrence North with a chance to build that lead to four. Barry Hill. Cassiano to Watts. 
And down it goes to Montross. Turns around and gets it to Paul. Eric with a good move. He takes that big drop step and he covers a lot of ground in that. Looks like he likes to spin to that right shoulder. And then without the dribble, able to get the shot again. Damon bringing the ball back up. A four-point lead for Lawrence North. And a turnover. Another costly turnover for the Stars. Momentum switched again after those two quick timeouts by Lawrence North. They're back in control now. Four-point lead and the ball. And th this is where it's costly. We've got uh, seven to five in turnovers, but those two have resulted in points. The difference of two have resulted in points. Cassiano gets it right back. 2.36 remaining in this first half. 2016, Lawrence North. And the Montrose. Bailey gets a hand on it, commits the foul. That's Damon's first. Had a good double going on him there, and Bailey just got a little bit too close. Well, Montrose become a lot more active offensively. Calling for the ball. Here comes the play inside. And right there on the arm by Damon. Uh, Montrose to the line. Eric's ready at his first. Now he's really improving that 68% shooting. He's got great form up there. Soft touch for a big fella. I was going to say, that's good for a big man. Okay, he's got that elbow extended right toward the basket. A little short on that one, didn't get the roll. Damon pulls it down. A five-point deficit the Stars face with two minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the first half. Bailey directed that ball. Bush to Bailey inside. Lombrecht. Here's the feed. Bush to Alan Bush. And up it comes. Baseline. Dwayne Lewis almost got to that baseline. Stepped out. Watts. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, they're beginning to loosen up now a little bit. Good range. Twice Watts now. Six. Watts has stepped up there after Montrose has been double teamed to get that shot. That's a good save. Good Cummings. Point. Lawrence North really pressuring Bedford out of their regular offense. Lombrecht. No basket. The back official called traveling on the start of the drive. Met with the displeasure of a lot of fans here. Let's look. Maybe we can pick it up. Here's the pass over. Lombrecht uh, with the travel there. And number 10, Curry, is back in the lineup. Dwayne Curry back in for Bedford North Lawrence. So that knee looks like it's all right. Well, that's good news. And the block against Lombrecht. That's only four team fouls. So again, it doesn't look like Lawrence North will go the line here. All right, out of bounds under the basket. One twenty-two left in the first half. A five-point lead for Lawrence North. Barry Hill down in the corner to Cassiano. Now on top. Cassiano lets three go. Montross over the back. But a travel on Eric. No foul, but he moved his feet. Both coaches up a lot in today's ball game, shouting instructions to their teams. Substitution now. That's uh, number 55 for Lawrence North. Bob Kaiser. Kaiser is a 6'3 senior, 190 pounds, pretty good frame. Now substitution as Bedford North goes to its bench. Ethan Cox, number 52, seeing the action. He's 6'4 and 194 pounds senior, and he replaces Lambrecht. Bailey looks at the defense that's facing. This is Curry back in, as you said. Nice to see him back. Kicks. 
line drive right into the bench. Hit Bob straight right on the shoulder, and Bob, like the ex-ball player that he was, just sort of shrugged it off. Bailey looking. Now North Florence stars really have to get something going here. That's off the rim, no good. Rebound to Curry. There's the feed and a jump ball as Bailey goes up and he's tied up on the way. Was Cassiano, who's guarding uh, Damon very well today, held him to 11 points. A strong drive. Damon loves to do this. Cassiano right there. And a jump ball call there. All points toward Bedford. Cassiano's a pretty athletic young man. You saw him get above the rim earlier. And around it comes. Curry. In the corner, Bailey. That's an air ball. And the lead up court. Tipped away by Curry. Out of bounds. And look at Bailey. He's a hustler. He went right back into the tunnel there. He plays both ends of the floor. I talked to Dan Bush over the weekend. He loves this kid. He's got good talent. He's got good ability. But he's also got a big heart. He loves to play the game. He hustles at both ends of the floor. He's your ideal type high school player. And college mathematics. <laughs> well, they have to be decided. But it looks like he's going to have a real good college yeah. curve also. Oh, uh, yeah. Now I know what you mean. 15 seconds in the half. All right, Lawrence North pulling it out now. Wait for that one shot. They're going to go in the locker room with the lead here at the half. Throw it away. A chance to close that gap. Here comes Bailey. That's it fly. Oh, he got the three. He got the three. Oh, my head. Right Let's take a look. This is the guy you want. Look at behind the back dribble with three seconds to go. He gets right to the top of the key. And it goes in at the buzzer to make this a game now. Only a two-point lead for Lawrence North. We've come to the end of the first half. And the score, Lawrence North 23, Bedford North Lawrence 21. This has been an interesting game, 23-21. The deuce margin between these two does not really explain what we have seen. It hasn't been as exciting, maybe, as that first game that we had this afternoon, but it's had its moments, and we've seen some great play by some players on each team. Well, we mentioned both of these teams scored 34 points in the first half this morning and afternoon, respectively, but not nearly the offensive output. But I think what you're seeing is a lot more work on the coach's part to try to stop things. They each know they have to stop the big player on the other team, and they've really done a nice job. It wasn't until the very end when Bailey made uh, some big plays and then, of course, the three-pointer at the buzzer where he finally brought his team back to only two points down. If there was a point of contention or criticism about Lawrence North's play in the afternoon game was they failed really on many occasions to get the ball inside the Montrose, really get it into a place where he could work with it. Likewise, you pointed out, Eric also has to be moving in order to be effective. Well, he's done a lot better job of that. The, the coaches have talked to him about that. He's moved with the ball. He's got 11 points here at the half, but he's getting the ball and turning right to the basket. When he's not, he's looked for Watts outside for the jumper. So Lawrence North offense improved a lot, uh, really because Montrose seems to be moving a lot more. On the other hand, Damon Bailey for Bedford North Lawrence is a self-contained creator. He is because we've seen him so many times today take the rebound and then just come right down the floor for a one-on-everybody offense, but he doesn't do it in a, in a ball hoggish style. He does it under control. He's had a couple shots blocked today, but then he came through at the end with that big play. Uh, Bedford is just really has been hanging tight, and if they do that, if they can stay close, they give it to Dane with a minute or two to go in the game. He can win about any game that's that close. You notice that uh, Bush put the ball in Bailey's hands, bringing it up court several times in the second in the first uh, half of the game, the second quarter. Is he going to do that in the second he, half? Do you think? I think he will. The Lawrence North guards are very quick. They've taken Lawrence uh, Bedford North Lawrence out of their regular offense, and it's not afforded Damon the, the amount of time he needs to have the ball to score. And so what uh, uh, Dan Bush has done is give Damon the ball to bring it down. He can create a lot of things. Well, we said this was the Marsh Hall of Fame All-Stars, and that's exactly what it is. We've had two great games, a good consolation game earlier, and now a great close championship game, too. We are at halftime, and the score here at halftime, Lawrence North by two, 23-21.
three to three pointer that Bailey throws up here to get them back into the game. There's the clock. Saw Damon look up the scoreboard. He knows how much time. A quick behind the back dribble. And that really brought the crowd's feet up or up on their feet to give us this two point ball game. Should be a great second half. Well, you might have been right the first time. Some of the people could have been rocking in their seats and their feet could have been up. <laughs> <laughs> you and I will be uh, will be going to uh, Market Square Arena tomorrow night for the first game of the Hoosier Classic. Indiana will meet Rich Wichita State. And there are still some tickets available for that. You may contact or get the tickets through the ticket office at the Market Square Arena up in Indianapolis. We are playing here in Bloomington, Indiana at Assembly Hall. Championship game between Lawrence North Wildcats and the Bedford North Lawn Stars. It's a close but low scoring game. Expect to see more scoring here in the second half. Look for Bedford North Lawrence to use that press a lot more. Some of the intimidating banners that face any visiting collegiate team when they come into play at Assembly Hall. I don't think they intimidate the high school teams. That's, no, not uh, really the high school. Different level. I'm glad I, you put I that said in there. the collegiates. <laughs> <laughs> Tipped away. Last touched. Uh, let's check to see. Yeah, they get the ball. They give the ball to Bedford North Lawrence, and I think it was the Lawrence player that did touch it. Uh, Bedford North Lawrence player that touched it, but uh, the call goes to the Stars. Big possession early here. This would uh, basket here give North uh, Bedford North Lawrence a tie. It's been a long time since they've been that close in the ball game. This is Curry with the ball, moving very well, but in no man's land down there at his height. Here comes Bailey, drops back, falls off the rim, no good. And almost thrown away. Scramble for the ball out of bounds. And it'll go to Lawrence North. Great uh, defense by Montrose there. He came out and forced Damon Bailey to change that shot, a fall away that Damon not able to hit. So the Wildcats put it in play right in front of their own bench at the corner of their bench. And here comes Watts. Sure, he's limping a little bit. Yeah, it looks little like he does yeah. favor that knee a little bit, but he's in the ball game to start the second half. And it's off the rim, no good. Chase down. This is Cummings for the Stars. Across to Bailey. Pulls up for three. No, that's short. Cassiano. Boy, right away they come to Lewis, Dwayne Lewis, and round they go. Cassiano. Offensive foul. Cassiano, Eddie. Gets his shoulder down. We saw him do that the first game this afternoon, too. Personal number two. He likes to take it right to the basket. Uh, Damon Bailey with the position that time. The ball swings all the way around. Damon's got position there, and there's the contact. At the seven-minute mark, we've played a minute. It's still 23-21. No change in the score. Well, I thought there'd be more scoring here in the second half, but not so far. Curry. And a reach in called on Keith Berry. That's number three on Berry Hill. And he becomes the first player on either team to reach the number three plateau. It has taken almost four minutes to play this first minute and a half of the third quarter. Curry is Bailey. Good bounce inside. No, here's Bailey. I'm sorry. And a whistle and a foul. That goes against Lombrecht, Jason Lombrecht, who now has his third foul. Trying so hard to stay inside and pack it down close. If you've got a big fellow like Montross in there, I would imagine, Laz, uh, if you the closer you can keep him to the basket offensively on his own defensive rebound, the better chance you have. All right, that's two key players now with three fouls. Cassiano, who's been guarding David Bailey, he's still in the ball game, but Lambert comes out. He's the one been guarding Montrose from behind. Lewis gives it right back to Watts, and Watts walks it across the 10-second line and then waits for his offense to set up. Knocked away by Curry. Inside and a foul. That'll go against. Let's wait and see where they make the call. The Stars 
And it's against Bailey, his second. Here's from under the basket. Drop pass, uh, bounce pass comes into Montrose. Right there, Damon on the reach. That's the second team foul against Bedford North Lawrence in the second half. Marciano to Watts, and around it goes. Barry Hill from inside the paint for two. Keith Barry Hill for his first field goal of the game. Took almost two minutes for that first basket gives Lawrence North a four-point lead. 25-21. Now Bailey looking. Backs it out again and wants to set it up again. Goes inside and turns it over. You can see he wants to make that drive into the middle. We saw that a lot in the afternoon game. Cassiano able to cut it off, and Dan Bush trying to figure out how to get some more points on the board. Eddie Cassiano coming up against Chad Mills. Breaks the pressure easily and takes it left side as we look at a record attendance for these four games being played here today. Look at that up and over the glass, and he'll go to the line. Mondros. We'll step back to the charity stripe. The foul, I believe, is on Chad Mills. It is his first. Oh, now North really going inside to Montrose. Look, he's got three guys around him, but the high pass, no one else able to get it. And the foul sends Eric to the line. Record attendance of 20,945 for both sessions, afternoon and evening, here at Assembly Hall. New record. Montross with 10 points in the first half and scoreless here in the second. Sends the second on its way and there's his first point. A little pressed by Lawrence North now. And Bailey gives it back to Curry and Curry will bring it up against Watts with 525 left to play in the third. Down to the baseline, that shot is blocked, jump ball, no, a foul. And they're going to call the foul against Bedford North Lawrence's Ethan Cox. Let's look, maybe we can see it. Here's the drive inside. Montrose deflects that shot, and there's the foul, Cassiano was fouled from behind. That is the first foul on Ethan Cox. And it comes at the 516 mark of the third quarter. Chad Mills. But Cassiano breaks the pressure. And over it goes. Double jump with the ball. Fans thought that Montrose might have traveled. No call from the official. There he has another field goal. The lead is up to seven. Blocked. It's it right back. No, it won't fall. Bailey is fighting for the ball. Montrose pulls it away. Here's a fast break. No conversion. It doesn't work. And we have a foul. Well, Eric Montrose at the other end of the floor is really causing havoc to the Bedford uh, offense. Damon Bailey trying to get that rebound. Montrose went right over him. Let's take a look here. Watch how he makes this shot go a little bit higher. It's missed. Damon's right there for the rebound. Montrose just reached right over. There's that nice outlet pass. But now good hustle on the Bedford uh, North Lawrence Stars Park. Right there's the charge and give the ball back to Bedford. Wayne Wilson's third personal foul and it's 28-21. Bedford with the ball. Bailey looking. Here's three on the way. That's long. Rebound to Curry. Gives it to Bailey. He goes to the glass. No good. Montross with the outlet. Watts. And another foul. Blocking foul. It was called against Beckham. The Stars want a timeout. We have 4.15 left to play in the third quarter. That foul is on number 12, Jamie Cummings, a blocking foul. And with time out, the score reads Lawrence North 28, Bedford North Lawrence 21. Here's the defense. Costiano picks his dribble up, always looking for the big guy. Right there he is. That's a good move. He just caught the ball on a hop. 
and then they went up strong with it. Well, he's allowed to come down, and he goes back up again. As long as he doesn't have the ball when he comes down the second time, he's okay. He allowed two steps. He, he did it very gracefully, and uh, some of the fans thought it might have been a travel, but just a good play for the big guy. At the line's Keith Berryhill. That's his first trip to the strike tonight. And gets the roll of the ball for his third point. 29-21. As Lawrence North very, very positively, slowly, but effectively pulls away. This is the second. Here's Cummings. And now Bailey brings it up. That's just what we were talking about. Guards the ball. Seems to have eyes in the back of his head, Lass. Mills. Cummings. Curry. Now Bailey. Bedford still hasn't scored in this half. He left at half 23-21, now 29-21. Bailey gets the basket, draws the foul. Cassiano picks up his third. Damon will go to the strike. Took just over four minutes, but that's the guy they need to get the ball to. Talked about Damon getting the ball at the point. Here he is on the inside, again, on the move. Cassiano with the foul. Damon gets the hoop, and that's a big foul on Cassiano. He's done a great job on Damon so far held into 16 points and again the first hoop for Bedford here in the second half. Damon gets the three point play. Three minutes 45 seconds remaining in this third period. Up court it comes tipped away but uh, recovered by Lawrence North and the Wildcats working out of trouble. This is Damon Watts. Casiano over to Barry Hill. Two more for Damon or for Keith Barry Hill. And he has five. He's got a nice little shot. Yep. Both he and Watts stand around the 12 to 15 foot range for those outlet passes. Bailey right side. And down in trouble down there. Puts it up. A foul underneath goes against Lawrence North. Let's wait to see if. He was in the act of shooting, Ethan Cox. Bailey a lot more active since that timeout. He draws the double team to him and then dishes off inside. Cox gets fouled and goes to the line. Lewis has picked up personal number four. Ethan did not score this afternoon. I don't believe he played, and that's an air ball. A little bit tense and handling the ball relatively little compared to his teammates. Cox will have another effort. Here it is. And he hits this. His first point. Substitution. Long back in the lineup for the Cats. Lewis leaves. He's got four fouls. There you see Dan Bush giving some instruction on the press now. Dan uh, Bedford North Lawrence back to the full court press. Long will throw it in. And it comes to Mondros, and then back to Long. Barry Hill. Cassiano, there it is. That's the same side of the court team. Barry Hill from the corner for two more. Barry Hill has come to life in the third quarter. He has seven. All seven of his points right here in this quarter. Little half court trap now by Lawrence North. 33 25. Curry down to Bailey. Goes behind. But he draws the foul, and Bailey uh, is holding his left leg. Uh, let's wait to see. I think he's got a cramp. It looks like a leg cramp. He's uh, just a little bit below the knee. Number 20 and number 20 in for uh, let's let's keep our eye on it as, as they hyperextend the leg. That's the way you get the cramp out. He's got the fake inside for the position. Right there's the foul. He doesn't get the roll here, but as he fell down, looks like that leg tightened up on him. That's the right leg. Let's watch now. He's got great body control. Watch how he changes the position of the ball once he gets in the air, and then he goes down. Yeah. It seems to be really tight on him. We're going to have to wait and see. His own teammates are helping him up. And uh, we have an official's timeout. 
There's Bailey making the move to the basket. Maybe we can see it. Boom, down he comes. Oh, it was tight right there. 232 remaining, and it's 33-25 Lawrence North with the eight-point lead. Well, Lanza, the loss of Bailey or the ineffectiveness of him right now would really spell doom for Bedford North Lawn. Well, Fennick got a great game, not as high scoring as we thought, uh, but Bedford was able to come close to points at the half, but Lawrence North took off again right at the beginning of the third quarter, and it took Bedford more than four minutes to get on the board. They finally did with a Bailey three-pointer, and now he's due up the line for two shots. If he's able to continue, if not, a substitute will have to come in to take those free throws. So a wise timeout by Dan Bush to see if that minute break could help Damon get back in the ball game. And there at the other end, you see Lawrence North bench. Eric Montrose, the big seven-footer, playing much better in the after uh, the night game than he did this afternoon. Uh, not only scoring, but dishing the ball off to his teammates. And again, real strong effort on the boards. Do you ever have a leg cramp? Yeah, they... Uh, uh, we used to always take a little salt for them. They had salt tablets over on the bench. Um, during the game, you would take them. They don't seem to heal right away. They're tough to shake off in, in the immediate future in a minute timeout, but looks like Damon's going to go in again. They seem to be they, all right. They, they feel almost as if immediately after it's happened like this and he walks, it feels like it's almost ready to do it again. You have that, you have that tendency, at least the, the times that I've had simple cramps, and certainly not to the extent that these young men have. There's but uh, Kiefer from the uh, Lawrence North bench. Here comes Damon. He's ready to go. We'll be shooting two. Well, it didn't break his concentration, did it? He's an amazing athlete. As I mentioned this afternoon, he's got a chance to break Marion Pierce's all-time Indiana high school scoring record of 3,019 points in a four-year career in high school. Damon averaging about 35 a game. Needs to go well into the semi-state to get a chance to break that record. Lawrence North's lead is 6, 33, 27. Watts, and he finds the big fella. Back out it comes to Berry Hill. Inside, tipped right back again, and going up for the shot is long. But the rebound, pulled down in good fashion by Chad Mills to Bailey. And they work it around. Lombrick, number 40, back in the game for Bedford. Again, drawing the sign of the Montrose. Three on the way. Push. He just can't get it to fall. He's their three-point shooter, but he just can't get it there. Keith Berry Hill off the rim, no good. Montross chases it down. Very agile for a big man, Les. Yep, he was able to get that, the left hand on it, and then chase it right down, gave Lawrence North another possession. Minute 25, and stepping in, great save, just a great save by Jamie Cummings. There it is. Just two, it's a big basket for Chad Mills. That's only his second. Pressure by Bedford out of bounds, and the ball game down to four points now. 107 left in the third. Long looking to Barry Hill. Here they come. Cassiano, it's short. And we have a foul against Bedford North Lawrence. I think they were originally pointing at Bailey. They were. That's his third. All right, let's take a watch. Here's from underneath the basket. A one on four. And right there, the foul call. Eddie Cassiano with only five points is at the line. Here are a couple of very important free throws. At this stage of the game, 101. Remaining in the third period. Cassiano is one of the better free throw shooters, if not the best on the team. 87%. And the second is good. So he hits both ends of a two-shot opportunity, and it's back to a six-point lead, 35-29. We're inside a minute. Third quarter action. 
Jaws holds his ground, but a little bit of body motion and the official underneath called the foul. That was Alan Bush going in there against him. Bush 5'10", 145. He's out man. Really forces the contact there. And the call goes against Montrose. Number 53, Montrose in the foul. His second is Eric. 13 points through this length of time in the third. He had 16 this afternoon, 17 rebounds. I wouldn't be a bit surprised whether he's in double figures right now in rebounds. We don't have an official tabulation. Alan Bush's free throw. Narrows it to a five-point lead. And now four. Once again, the Stars put on the pressure, and it goes to the big fella, off to Berry Hill, and up to Cassiano. Cassiano just gets around everyone. Right to the glass for an easy two. That's the way to break that press. They simply brought it down, had the two-on-one at the end. Cassiano with a nice move. In the corner, two more on the way, right on target. Chad Mills, I think he's found the range, last. Yep, he's made two now, one from the right, one from the left. Montrose out there to put pressure on, he's still got it to go. This ball game a long way from being over there. You see the time left in the quarter. 37-33, it's a four-point lead. And Lawrence North with the ball, will play for the last shot, a foul. That's gonna send Montrose to the line. It's a big foul. It looks yeah. like it's going to go on Lombrick. No, it doesn't. It goes on 12. Cummings. That's Cummings. Reaching in from behind. Montrose at the line. Uh, about the same situation we had at the half when Lawrence North took a shot and missed. Bailey was able to get it to come down with a three-pointer. Five seconds left. Plenty of time to get down the floor. Either whether Eric makes or misses these. He's got 12 points up till now. That's not going to fall. Bailey with the ball. Three seconds. He'll fire. Oh, off the side of the glass as we have come to the end of the third period of action. The score, Lawrence North, the Wildcats 37. The Bedford North Lawrence 33. 37-33 as we start the fourth quarter of action. Interestingly, last... The largest lead at any of the breaks has been Forbes. 11-7 at the end of the first. Lawrence North had it then. Only a two-point margin at halftime, 23-21, and now 37-33. That's a good job by Bedford. They, they were held scoreless the first four minutes of that third quarter, and then came on strong with 12 points. But again, a very low-scoring game when you think that Damon Bailey averages 35 points a game, and here his team's only got 33 uh, through three quarters. Damon, of course, with 19 points. Eric Montrose has 13. Uh, they both lead each of their teams respectively. Bedford North Lawrence only 35% now for the game. They were 3 of 12 in that last quarter. Lawrence North is 50% on the game. Here's Cassiano. He makes a nice drive. He's a left-handed player. He crossed overs to his right hand and then goes up strong with the left hand. And you saw Bailey back out. Remember, Bailey has third fouls. The Stars can ill afford to lose him. Montrose, 13 points, 11 rebounds. Very unusual to see a guy get as many points and rebounds, but uh, this big guy does. He has today. Bedford North Lawrence with the ball. They trail by four, 37-33. And Bush just can't get it to fall. Cassiano. Travel. He's called on Cassiano. And who's there to force it? Mr. Bailey. That was Damon trying to prevent the fast break. And the traveling call gives it right back to Bedford. And it comes in around. Lombrecht down in the corner from Bush. The Lombrecht back to Bush. Bailey just waits to see where the ball is going to fall. Down it goes. Baseline again throws it away off a foot. And I think that was off Montrose. It's size 16's out there. Let's look at the stats through three quarters. We talked briefly about them. 47% for Lawrence North, only 38 for Bedford. And we'll be back to look at those when play stops. 
Just cannot get it to fall. Cummings baseline move from the right side. Offensive foul. That is sacrifice underneath there that Bailey just moves under and takes the charge. Both teams over the limit now, so they'll walk to the other end, but that was player control foul, so says the official. So it's out of bounds to Bedford. Damon quickly down the floor. Here's those stats again. Seven of ten on the free throws. Lawrence North getting their share now. Eleven turnovers have hurt North, and that's why they only hold a four-point lead. Alan Bush trying to shake long. Down to Lombrecht, up to the glass for two. And it's a two-point game. Jason Lombrecht, his second field goal. Watts. Montross back to Long. To Watts, Cassiano for three. No good. Tipped away right into the hands of Alan Bush. Bedford still keeping five players in there for the board. Again, a chance to tie this ball game. Well, this is a pro Bedford crowd here tonight. Bailey pulls up. That's short. Rebound, Lombrecht for two. We have a tie game. Now Watts with the ball. Back to Long. Inside, Watts, no. Over the back, no. They call the foul on Bedford North Lawrence. That's going to go on Lombard, and that's going to make four on him. Let's watch it. This is a good open shot. Watts has made this in the first half. But if Montrose goes straight up, he's allowed to do that, and he did. Lineback was going backwards to make the contact. Uh, again, Montrose used his height well. You're allowed to go straight up. Good call. Montrose with 13 is at the line. Well, certainly perturbed Jason Lombrick with his fourth foul coming at the six-minute mark. Montrose puts the Cats out in front by one, 38-37. Sets his eyes and lets it fly. It's good. Now the Cats lead by two, 39-37. Clock is running inside six minutes. There's a half-court trap by Lawrence North. To Bailey, right through the trouble. Dishes it off. Lombrecht, who ties it up. Well, Damon's got some great passing abilities. He drew Montrose to him and dish to the open man. Out of bounds. And it's going to go to Bedford North Lawrence. Let's wait and see. That was Bush with the pressure that time. And Cassiano dribbled out of bounds. Give the ball to Bedford out of bounds. Now the Stars with a chance to take the lead. We're tied at 39, five and a half minutes, plus a couple of seconds, all that's remaining in this game. Bush handles. Goes inside, puts it back up again, won't fall. It's almost a position in which he loses some of his effectiveness, Laz. He gets in a little tight there, and uh, the bigger players can knock it away. He really puts out the effort, though. Cassiano, we're tied at 39. Barry Hill off the rim, no good. And the foul. And that will go against Montrose, I believe. Let's wait and see. It is Eric's third. We have an official timeout. Four minutes, 58 seconds. Remaining to play. We are tied at 39. There it is. 39-39. Largest lead at quarters has been four. Look at this last play. Long rebound. Bedford North Lawrence comes up with it. Players scramble to the ground. That foul was called on Montrose. 
So now Bedford at the other end for a one and one. Jamie Cummings will be at the line. Well, the Wildcats have turned their season around. They started out very poorly, losing three. And now, as we've rolled farther into the season, and into the holiday period of the season, they've been able to turn that around. They're playing much more respectably, Lance. As you mentioned, Lawrence North has uh, that history. They started slow last year, then became the state champions. So, uh, again, a slow start this year. Now back to the action. I just had a sense this would be a close game, even though Lawrence North had the lead. And comes up a little short. We've seen a lot of short shooting today in all the games. These kids may be getting a little tired now. Yeah. Watts. Around the Berry Hill. Cassiano really played a good game. He's done a good job on uh, Damon Bailey. There's the turnaround short. Montross puts it up again. This time, Bailey, and look at the face and determination as he comes away with that board. I think these two players are going to be the ones you'll see the teams go to. Montrose for Lawrence North. Damon Bailey right there with the ball. I'm sorry, that's not Damon. 32 got the ball there. Lombra, there's Bailey inside. Won't go. Right back. That's push. Tries to put it up. Tip. They'll give the ball back to Beckford. Well, Montros does a nice job of keeping those arms straight exactly. up in the air. He doesn't draw the foul that way. And he either blocks it just because the ball hits it. He's so high up there. Or he changes the shot. Excellent defense by the big man. Well, he is really a disciplined player. Push lets three fly. That's in the well. Bush is 19 oh. of 30 and three pointers today. He's had seven or eight. I don't think he's made one yet. None of them. Still tied at 39. We are down to 345. Cassiano. And he'll go to the line. Quite a game. Again, not the scoring we anticipated. But both these teams playing evenly as we come down to the wire. The field goal shooting down for both teams, 42%. Bedford only 38%. That's coming into this ball game, they are coming into uh, the action today as a team. They were 63% from the field. The foul was on Bedford's Mutadir, Ryan Mutadir. And uh, Cassiano counts to break this tie, 40-39. That's the guy Lawrence North wants up there, 87% from the line. Good concentration, second is good as well. Cassiano has 11 points, six of those in the second half. And the clock continues to run, 41-39. North with the Cats holding on to that two-point lead. Bailey, down it goes on the side, baseline shot. Is nothing but net for Jamie Cummings, his first field goal of the evening. All these North uh, Bedford players can hit that shot when they're open. A good pick inside, tied the ball game. Cassiano. Back to Cassiano. Chad Mills guards him. They go back, trapped down on Montrose. Back out to Cassiano. Watts. Barry Hill. It's off the glass, no good. Off the edge of the rim, rather, no good. Now Bedford has a chance to take the lead. Three. Oh, yeah, Damon Bailey. Damon did not score in the fourth quarter, and we saw him in the afternoon game really lead his team. That's 22 now. He got his first three points of the quarter. 44-41. Bedford takes the lead. And another one right back, Eddie Cassiano. That shootout deal came oh. real now. Tied at 44. 219 left. It's going to go down to the wire. To Bailey. Tipped away. Lewis for two. Pepper just didn't read the defense very well on that one. Great defense there. Anticipation. Now a steal. And back up and in again, and it's a four-point lead for the Wildcats. Six straight points by, by Lawrence North here on excellent defense. Two steals in a row. 
Out of bounds, and it'll go to Bedford. And we have an official's timeout at the 145 mark. And a three-point Bedford North Lawrence lead in a period of about 30 seconds has turned around into a four-point lead for Lawrence North. Very quick change of pace here in this high school ball games. We saw it in both games this morning. And again here, the steals really is what led Lawrence North to this lead. They had gotten down two points on the, the three-pointer by Damon Bailey. And down three points, but matched again by Cassiano. Yeah. I have Cassiano for 14 points. That's right at his average last, 14.1. And they've done a nice job of moving to the open spot when Montrose gets triple team. Eric's got him the ball. They haven't made as many as they'd like, but it sure has kept him in the ball game. Eric has 15. And uh, that's pretty much the extent of the double-figure scoring for Lawrence North. Just look at those steals. Damon's got the ball. He's watching the offense, not the defense. And here's the steal as Lewis sneaks in to make it and then dribbles the length of the floor for the layup. Smart play there, not the fouling for the three-point play. Yeah, but then on the ensuing inbounds pass, uh, another steal by Lawrence North led to another quick basket. So six straight points by Lawrence North after they got down. Yeah, it was Watts, Damon Watts, getting that second steal. Jack Kiefer sees himself a minute 45 seconds away from victory, leading by four points, 48 to 44. This game is far from over. A three-point play and a turnover, and who knows what could happen. But there it is in the hands of Damon Bailey at the 138 mark. And Bailey drops it off, gets it right back. Off the rim, no good. Chase down and out of bounds and into the fans on the far side, and it'll be Bedford ball. This is where uh, uh, Bedford looks to go to Damon. If he's got the open three-pointer, probably take it, but more than likely that drive to the, to the basket we saw late in the game this morning. They try to get it through the big fella, and... Uh, he just clogs yeah, the middle up so well sure that the, the other teams aren't able to penetrate inside. Excellent defense by Montrose. Well, Lawrence North gives it up again. And they need to come in. Get it into Lombrecht. Bailey trying to work on Cassiano. Can't get it up. Bush at the minute seven, minute six. Now Bailey comes out, takes the ball. He'll drive on Cassiano, goes to the glass, and draws the foul. And Cassiano goes down, apparently cut uh, an elbow or a knee into the inner thigh or maybe the chest, but he's really, he's really hurt. Well, it might be an elbow even. Let's yep. see. No, oh, here he is. He's up. He didn't want to come out. Want to jam the finger. Let's watch. Steven wants the ball. He comes off the drive. He's going to take it right into Montrose. Cassiano right on his side. And uh, looks like he got kneed there by Damon. So that's be free throws now as Bailey goes to the line. One minute left in the game. Substitution. Number 10, Dwayne Curry back in for the North Lawrence Stars. As Bailey will be at the line shooting. Montross playing with four fouls. And it's a moot point now with a minute remaining. First free throw off the front of the rim. I think that's the first one Damon's missed today, both afternoon and evening. Has 22 points, averaging 34 and a half. Second is good. Watts inside a minute. Now Bedford has to come out after him. Watts will try to chew up the clock to Barry Hill, taken away and a foul. Good pressure by Bedford as they got the steal and right away the foul. And a one and one at the other end. Well, that's another way of doing it. We have 46 seconds remaining. Two free throws makes it a one-point game. That's where that foul hurt you. Otherwise, Bedford would have to come the length of the floor. Lawrence North would have had a chance to set their defense up. Now they get a chance for a free throw and possibly the bonus. Barry Hill draws his fourth. And at the line will be Jamie Cummings. He's a 6'1", 170-pound senior, and he can't get it to fall. And immediately moves in and commits the foul. 
So they make the long walk to the other end as Keith Perryhill, a 50% shooter, will go to the line. Cummings, 88% from the line, missed that one. And that foul goes against him. No time off the clock, so it's still 48-45, and we'll see how effective Keith Berryhill can be, as he has an opportunity now to almost put this game out of reach. One and one. And he gets that first one. One shot, Clayton one. 49-45, four-point lead. Now a five-point lead. Curry Hill counts them both. 44 seconds. Curry needs to get it up quickly. How's they going to go to Damon? There he is. Three on the way. Oh, he did it. And a timeout quickly. This game's not over yet. But Damon goes to his right. He knew the team needed that three-pointer. He's got good hang time, good leap on that shot and able to get that to go in. Let's watch now. He comes out, Cassiano tries to make the steal, leaves Damon alone off the dribble, and notice how quickly they call timeout before Lawrence North is able to grab it to go to the sidelines and set up their offense. Damon had pressure that time, still able to hit that three-pointer. We've got a two-point ball game now. This has not been a play-by-play -play exciting type contest last, but it's gotten into its exciting moments. There have been exciting moments in each of the four quarters. Yeah, we probably expected a, a higher scoring game, but there sure has been the excitement. The turnovers have uh, been a problem for both teams, but now it's right down the last half minute, and this game not over yet. The morning attendance for the two early games, 10,229. Tonight's attendance, another record, 10,716, and the total attendance for the day, 20,945. Here to see four games in the Marsh Hall of Fame Classic. The early games, if you were not with us, the first game today, the Stars, Bedford North Lawrence defeated Pike 65-60. In the second contest, Lawrence North was victorious over Newcastle 72-58. And in the consolation game, Pike defeated Newcastle 74 to 59. All right, here's the full court press by Bedford. They need to steal right now. Lawrence North need to take control of the ball and get it down to the other end. And here's the deep pass. Turns misses the shot and the rebound and a foul over the back. Barry Hill took a shot that possibly was not needed. We're second guessing. Well, we knew the press would be on, and Lawrence North did a nice job to break it. The long pass is risky, but Barry Hill really does a nice job of hauling it in. And I think you're right, Chuck. He probably should have waited for his teammates now. Bedford goes for the steal. Off balance, he had to turn around. Four percentage shot. Lawrence North, uh, Bedford's got the position. The foul comes from behind on Barry Hill. And again, it's the second time now that, that Bedford's come up with a rebound. And instead of having to dribble down the floor and score, they've been fouled. Cummings missed the last time the one-on-one, -on -one, and that is five fouls on Barry Hill. As he leaves the game with nine points. But now Bedford at the line again. Still 30 seconds. So that only took four seconds to get uh, Bedford a chance to score again. James Long replaces Barry Hill, who leaves the game with 30 seconds remaining. And his fifth foul. And a lot of pressure on this young man, Jason Lombre, shooting one and one. Looks very confident there. And look for Bedford to put the press on. That's 10 now for Lombre. We're tied at 50. Cassiano. Guarded by Curry. It's like a last second shot now. See if they go into Montrose. If he's double teamed, he'll probably dish back outside. It's a delay game that uh, Lawrence North runs with Montrose at the high post. Now Montrose slides low. There it is. He is fouled. He'll go to the line with four seconds remaining. That's the guy they wanted to go into, and even though he had four guys on him, he knew not to put the ball low. Turn to take that jump shot. Let's take a look at it. 
Good judgment here to get the ball into him once. Now there's four stars around him. He turns without a dribble. A little off balance, but he's got a good shot from that distance. And that foul goes on Bailey. He picks up his fourth, which could become crucial should this game go to overtime. Montrose at the line. Bedford has called timeout. Yeah, that's just to uh, add pressure. I don't know what the psychological advantage is anymore. Used to be years ago it was, but these kids shoot so many free throws anymore that uh, those kind of advantages sometimes don't work. Now this gives the chance, uh, both coaches a chance, to go over the, the plays, the, all the things that could happen on a missed shot here. It'd be difficult for Bedford to go down the floor to get a good shot uh, unless they were able to call a timeout and set up some kind of special play. But right now, it's that Montrose, uh, it's up to him to, to put these free throws in. On the year, he is 30 of 44 coming into today's action at 68%. He was six out of seven this afternoon, so he's been able to hit those free throws today. Well, we've given you some exciting basketball today. And this game's going to go right down to the wire. Four seconds remaining. Tied at 50. There are the timeouts remaining. Each team with one. And uh, needless to say, there are going to be some happy fans go on this evening and some not so happy. The advantage of this time with four seconds should Montrose make these free throws. A three-point shot, of course, wins the game. Yeah. Bedford probably wouldn't have time to get inside the three-point line anyway. So any shot they took uh, from here on in would be a three-pointer. See, Merrick had his trouble this after this tonight's game. Five of ten from the line. Now Montrose ready to take two. Here's the first. Well, I'll tell you, when the chips are down, he's there. Real cool. That's the guy you want to go to. He came through. Look at that look on his face. Very confident. 14 points today. Now what did they call? I called a lane violation on, uh, on Dwayne Lewis. Out of bounds to Bedford and quickly a timeout. Well, Bedford calls timeout. Evidently stepped in the lane too late, or he stepped on the line. Or he stepped away from the line. He could have done that, too. He stepped on the line when Montrose was getting ready to shoot, so it was a lane violation because he stepped across before Eric let go of the ball. Let's see what happened. Oh, there. Yep. Well, no, wait. All right, that's the, now, that's the first free throw. The first one he makes. Now, that's okay. That's the second one the second. That, uh, that North stepped on the line. So now we've got a situation with four seconds. We saw Lawrence North use that long pass. Uh, probably see Lawrence North in a full court press. Watch the second shot. Lower right of your screen. He's getting instructions from the coach behind. He turns and must have just been on the line to start with. And the ball goes over to Bedford. Huh sort of inconclusive from, from what right, we saw really last, see from that yeah, replay. Yeah. And as we thought, a full court press now by Lawrence North. Four seconds left. Well, what it, you know, obviously, Jack Kiefer doesn't want to foul. No, can't foul now. Got to let him take a long shot. Montrose on the ball out of bounds. Bailey's coming to the ball. There it is. Three seconds, two seconds. He lets it fly. And it's off the glass. And a squeaker, a thriller, right down to that final buzzer. Damon Bailey taking the shot from midcourt. Just catching part of the glass. We have come to the end of the game. Lawrence North wins it by one. There's Eric Montrose. And a jubilant Lawrence North team. Victorious tonight over Bedford North Lawrence. Final score, 51 to 50. We'll be back in a minute. Laz, we're just about out of time. Our many, many thanks. There's the final score, 51-50, Lawrence North winning. Many thanks to our excellent crew tonight bringing this game to all our fans throughout the state of Indiana. Final again, 51-50, Lawrence North. You and I will be on hand over many of these same stations tomorrow night. Wichita State versus Indiana from Market Square Arena in the first game of the Hoosier Classic. It's been a great day here at Assembly Hall.
And we thank all you fans for being with us, enjoying good high school basketball. This is the way it's played in the state of Indiana. Lawrence North, Newcastle, Pike, and Bedford North Lawrence. Four top 20 teams in the state, and they took it right down to the wire tonight, with Lawrence North winning 51-50 over Bedford North Lawrence's stars. Chuck Marlow, along with John Laskowski, wishing each and every one of you a very happy holiday season. So long, everybody. Jason Williams.